Hello there, it's Austin. Today we're gonna to spend a few minutes talking about recreating one of my favorite tropical IPAs. And when I say favorite, I mean I do literally have like a painting that has it depicted, so we're gonna to try to do it justice. Let's get started. So if you look up any brewing recipe online, it'll probably include water, and this one's not going to be too much different. So we'll start by collecting 4.8 gallons of reverse osmosis water. We're going to be adjusting this water with the following additions of calcium chloride, epsom salt, and gypsum. We'll be pretty heavy handed on the gypsum addition here, with the goal of enhancing our hop bitterness and overall dryness. As far as the fermentables, I'll be using Pilsner malt, Carapils, and white wheat malt. To add a touch more color and maltiness, we'll be including some Crystal 40 and Munich 2, but in pretty low percentages. Next up is adding all our grains to our kettle, which we've preheated to 149 degrees, and then we'll let the mash rest for about 60 minutes. At the conclusion of our mash, we'll recirculate the wort back through the grain basket a few times to help pick up any missed efficiency there. The last step of the hot side in our brew day is bringing our wort to a nice rolling boil and adding in our hops. At the 10 minute mark, or with 10 minutes remaining in the boil, we'll be adding in one ounce of Centennial hops and one ounce of Citra hops. These will add a really vibrant and sharp citrus character with a, a touch of a softer pine flavoring. At the five minute mark, we'll add in some Galaxy hops, which again tribute citrus, but also some really good stone fruit and pineapple melony characteristics. After cooling our wort down, we'll check our specific gravity and see how it compared to our target of 1073, and then we'll transfer it over to our fermenter and pitch our yeast. The yeast I'm using today is White Labs WLP002, which is an English ale strain. This yeast strain can contribute some fruity esters during fermentation, so really just putting the pedal to the metal on the tropical theme here. The fermentation schedule for this beer is a pretty standard seven days at slightly below room temperature. This is definitely a conscious decision, and not just because my whole house is below room temperature right now due to some insulation issues. Right around four days into our fermentation, once it has slowed down but not stopped completely, we'll add in some Citra and Galaxy hops as a dry hop addition. A few days later, after checking the final gravity and finding that the beer had dropped to a pretty decently low 1.014 FG, it was time to transfer it over to the serving keg. This keg was filled with sanitizer and then purged with CO2 to make sure we maintained pretty low oxygen overall. After a week of cooling, carbonation, and conditioning, Conditioning, our just over 7% tropical IPA was ready to serve and enjoy. The hop aromas pretty much explode out of the tap when you pour this beer, and when combined with that color, this beer is a tropical experience before you even take a sip. Perfect for the dead of winter. So recreating your favorite beers can always be a little tricky. Whenever I take inspiration from one of my favorite beers, I try to take it less as an exact copy, like I'm not trying to fool anyone in a blind taste test, and more like listening to a local band cover one of your favorite songs. And in that respect, I think this beer hits on a lot of my favorite elements of a tropical IPA. There's a quick bitterness with a ton of tropical flavors in the hops. I'm definitely getting a lot of stone fruit and citrus, which I really like. The color is pretty accurate, but even after a couple weeks, this is a really hazy beer. I think the maltiness might stick around for just a touch too long, so if I were to do this recipe again, I would probably bring it back to the lighter side a touch. I don't make a ton of beers pushing up into the 7% or so ABV range, but I think this one hides its booziness pretty well. It's not hot, and it's still very crushable for where it sits in the ABV range. I'm really enjoying having this beer on tap. It's playing all the same notes from the tropical IPA it's based off of, and I think this recipe has a chance to stick around and maybe be a repeat customer in my kegerator. Cheers.